Hello and welcome to another Scoutcast Battle Report over this wintry wonderland. We have the forces of the Drukari facing the mighty paladins and the Grey Knights with Draco, Valdus, and everybody else. Let's see how this goes. Welcome to the Battle Report. We are playing mission number 12 of the GT Pack, Scorched Earth. We've already done all the pre-game stuff. We'll go over the lists in just a second. But in terms of secondary objectives, I've taken Abhor the Witch, Engage on All Fronts and Scramblers for a Dawn of War deployment for mission 12. And Hamza, who I'm playing today, has taken um, Grind Them Down, Engage on All Fronts, and Raise the Banners as well. So that's going to be an interesting dichotomy. Let's take a look at the armies, and then we'll come back and take a look at this, the objectives. And here we have 2,000 points of Drakari. You've seen this list before. It is my standard competitive list, at least right now. So triple patrol detachments. The first patrol is a cabal, uh, sorry, cabal, a witch cult of red grief, so they can advance and charge with a succubus, five witches, two units of four birds, because I took a beast pack master with an agonizer, Nine Reaver Jet Bikes with three Heat Lances and five Hellions. That's right. That is the Witch Patrol, which is awesome. She does have a Warlord Trade for a three-up Invulnerable Save, and she does have the Helm of Spite as my extra relic. Then I have the Patrol of Cabal of Blackheart, Argon Scari himself with a Blast Pistol, Husk Blade, and Labyrinthine Cunning for some CP regeneration. He also gets the Alliance of Agony. And then five Cavalite Warriors, and the Slith, of course. Good old Slith. That is it for my Cabal of the Black Heart Patrol. And last but not least, my Cabal of Coven. And by Cabal of Coven, I mean my Coven Patrol. There's a Dark Techno Monster, it's Masters of Mutagen Patrol, with a Homunculus with a rifle and a whip, two units of five Incubi, Drazar, the Master of Blades, three units of Rex, Two of them with a hex rifle and also factor, and one of them with just a hex rifle. Two reapers. These are the forge world models. Yeah, I finally finished this guy up. Da, 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 da. Look at that. Looks so cool. I'm using the OG riders for them too. The OG pilots, and of course six venoms with one cannon and a twin link rifle because I've got all the infantry squads as well or units to let me unlock them. And there you have it. Um, he has the Nightmare Doll, so he has a 4-up Feel No Pain, and he's a Master Regenist, so at the start of my turns he heals for D3 wounds, which is pretty cool. And then, and that's my three Wall of Traits for the Alliance of Agony. So let's take a look at what the Grey Knights have brought to the battle! And here we have 2,000 points of Grey Knights. Hams, I'll take it away, what have you brought today? All right, so this time I got a double patrol. So this double patrol consists of Lord Commander Drago himself. He came out of the vault for this, did he? Oh, of course he did. Mm. He's carrying some Eldar Wraithblade weaponry in oh, there, too. Good, good. And we don't we, like our cousins. <laughs> then we got Grandmaster Voldus himself. Okay. And then the other two HQ choices were the Librarian and the Brother Captain Brother himself. Brother Captain there, and the Librarian. Correct. The librarian's got a warning stage. Oh. And then the brother captain has a halberd with a silencer, then yep. an apothecary in there as well. Oh, look at that. There he is. Very cool. So that's the HQ and elites, essentially. Well, there's more oh, the characters, here. essentially, yeah. among us there. Then you have? Then I got the Terminator unit. So we got a Terminator 10 man, 5 man, another 5 man, and then a 10 man paladin unit. Paladin in blue? Yes, sir. In and the bases in orange, and then in green. You got it. Cool. And then it, you did spend the CP. I mean, not the CP, you spent the points for... An Eversore Assassin. Ooh, Killy NT Horde Assassin. Yeah. I like it. And then I got a fast attack choice of 10 Interceptors. Oh, which is... hopefully combat squad in this game. Yep. And then we got a five-man strike squad. <laughs> All the Marines hold halberds, and every heavy weaponry is a silencer. Cool. That extra that extra on the tide is really, really good. Oh, D3 plus one damage. I love it. Gotta love it. Okay, so with that, let's dive in. Oh, Psychic Powers. Uh, what are your Psychic Powers um, in generic? So I'll start with the Paladins. They got Astral Aim. Yep. The Terminator's Boat Squad's got Sanctuary. Yep. 
Then the two interceptor squads that are also green and red, they got Sanctuary. Then we got the Strike Squad with Gate of Infinity. Yep. And then in the one other basic powers on the Apothecary is Gate of Infinity. Yep. Then the next four characters take all the new disciplines. So we got okay. Drago with minus one to wound. And he's got uh, Move and Shoot, Addict Imperator. Voldus repeats the same two powers with Warp Shaping. The Librarian's got Warp Shaping and gets CP back. And the Brother Captain has Hammer Hand. The Warlord is the Apothecary with first the fray. And the Relic goes on the Librarian with Santic Shard, which just gives me extra to cast and reroll. Okay, awesome. So there you have it, folks. 2,000 points of Knights of Titan. Or Sons of Titan. Or something about Titan. Except for that guy. <laughs> he is an imposter sent by the Inquisition. So Hamza deployed his army. Hamza, what did you put down? I was a little sneaky. I tried to use the obscure to the best of my advantage because you got those sneaky hex rifles. So I got those guys just out of line of sight. There are five interceptors. Uh, librarian. And then we got Drago out of line of sight. Then we got Paladins, hopefully all touching a terrain feature there. Inside of there, we got an Apothecary and Voldus. And then on this side, we just have five lonely interceptors. They're all just touching the terrain in there as best as they can. And that's all I have on the board. And in my side, I have all birds. Rex, Rex, Slith, Reaper, Reaper, Bikes, Witches, Incubi, Drazar, Hemunculus, <gasps> Rax, Succubus, Arkonskari, More Birds, Incubi, Cabalites, Beast Pack Master. And in Deep Strike Reserve, I have put my Hellions. Ooh. So with that, let's roll to see uh, who goes first. When do you choose your tide? Is that at the start of the battle round? Correct. Okay, very cool. So the Archon Skari rolls a two. Oh, I got a mighty one. And you got a mighty one. Oh, and I will gladly take the first turn. Turn number one for the Drukari. Good, good luck, Hamza. Have a good one. Boop. After movement, turn one. So Beast Pack Master moved here, as well as the birds, essentially to zone out some gates on this side of the board. And then I basically expanded. So against Grey Knights, you want to sort of zone out. So if he gates, he's got like a nine inch bubble around. And let, you know, when he teleports in, he can come in close. Uh, but that's like not till turn two now. So I don't have to worry about that at the moment. So what I'm trying to do here is I've got some awesome factors and hex rifles and, and venoms that could target that unit of five. So if we can kill that, that'd be good. Forcing him to bring more stuff this way. The two uh, Reapers are just on this side. Essentially, he's given me one target, which is a, the Paladin. So I'm going to take it. I might as well try. Uh, and then I've sort of moved up my characters in like a bubble, giving uh, in, uh, plus one toughness to the Venoms and then the characters in a support. So if he gets too aggressive, I can then counter it with the characters. I'm uh, keeping them back. So let's see. Let's see how they do. Because usually if they live till late game, it's actually kind of good. They're, they're pretty good late game as well. Okay, so with that, let's dive in to the shooting phase. And Drakari turn one. Shooting happened. Paladins transhuman and minus one damage. However, four Paladins still fell down. Oh, oh, so there's only six left. Um, these guys only killed a couple, like two, one each, basically. But then the Venoms killed two because they were awesome. <laughs> he rolled a lot of ones for some. That's the Over here, two of them did survive from the Ossa Factors and the Hex Rifles and the, and the Venoms, and they did pass their leadership because they're only leadership seven. So they could have run away. Just but I did use a Fire and Fate to get onto this objective because he did take... Uh, raise the banners and you cannot start the action if there's any enemy within scoring range of an objective. So you can't start the action here and you can't start the action here, which means he's only going to be able to raise one banner, which is good for me as it starts. Thinking. Now, I've, what I've done is I've sacrificed a lot. Like, he can push up and potentially charge a bunch, but then I'm hoping my counter will basically like take the wind out of the sails if he gets too aggressive. So with that, let's dive in to the Grey Knight, turn one. Here we are moving into Grey Knight, turn number one. They basically jumped up. They move really far. They want to go kill some birds. Uh, the Paladins have essentially moved up aggressively together with a blob of characters. Valdus, he raised the banner on the objective because you can do it with characters. And he has the six Paladins right here. He's got the Apothecary over here. He's got Drago in the middle. And then the brother captain is... Oh, you put him in deep strike. Okay. And then you've got the Librarian who basically measured 24 inches from the Helm of Spite to make sure that... I can't deny him. However, any psychic power is basically almost everywhere else. I have a deny, which is good. Over here, he just kept them two on the objective with that Venom right there. And with that, we're moving into the psychic phase. Yeah. 
End of turn one. Lots of shooting, of course, from the paladins. They are all buffed. They're minus one to wound. They've got like uh, sanctuary. sanctuary on them. They're they're just like buffed up, uh, which is normal. I tried to keep my uh, deny for the sanctuary because I wanted to kill some of these guys with a quick kill, but he rolled high on the on the roll, so I was unable to. And I even spent CB to try and get it over a nine to roll a ten, but he uh, he stayed. So they charged into the birdies and killed them. He edict Imperator out of them, so shot him the psyche phase and then moved and just got onto the objective. And then, oh, I have your morale test there. And he killed two Venoms, basically. Put a couple of wounds on that Venom. Oh, three Venoms, because he did kill that Venom as well. But we are moving. But that does mean I got the upsec out, so I hold that objective now. Darn. Which now means I get my 15 points for primary. Because uh, one of the birds survived back here, he was un wasn't able to consolidate to get engaged on all fronts, so I did stop him from getting his engage points there as well. So with that, we move into the top of turn number two for the Drakari. I got 15 points, and then we go from here. Okay, so at the end of my turn, I basically zoned out the whole table, so I basically have like a, a nine inch super like conglomeration of stuff, so you can't deep strike within nine. Um, and I basically now pushed him to almost like just his corner with deep strike uh, because he did have to spend all the CP this turn. So the two Reapers, uh, plus I did slash attack the, the, um, Terminators, so there was six. I did kill down the two, and then I charged with the Venom. He killed the Venom, and then piled in, and then attacked again to try and kill the Rax. But one Rax survived his obsec. So I auto pass morale to take his banner down and stop him from scoring any primaries. In the meantime, the Incubi just moved in and killed them. So I'm getting all my points there. But that is, that's, so let's just see what they can do. He still has lots of Deep Strikers, but he doesn't really have a lot of places to put them in. Recap. 1 CP extra for the uh, Grey Knights, but they do get zero primary points, which is a big deal in this uh, mission format. However, there's still fight in the Sons of Titan yet, so we'll see what happens. Uh, he was able to get a good pocket into here, 9 inches away from the Beast Pack Master, and he was able to get a nice pocket here, 9 inches away from that rack and these racks, so he can potentially kind of just put pressure on both. He advanced though, so he can't charge, and he did sort of move all his characters up with the Apothecary. He did keep the Brother Captain and uh, Strike Squad in Deep Strike Reserve, so he still has stuff left in the tank. He doesn't want to co totally commit to the table. So let's see what the Grey Knights can do as they are still Grey Knights. <laughs> End of the turn. So what happens? They moved up. He shot a lot into my uh, homunculus. Yes, sir. He lived with one wound. <laughs> he had like five Terminators, the Paladins, like you know. And then he did shoot and kill the Beast Pack Master, and he did kill a couple of the Incubi yes, sir. as well. Almost but they held them around. Almost killed the bikes, but they auto -pa They sorry. They they pass morale on a one. So they insanely, insanely courageously, and uh, Scar did take three damage because I decided to take a save on his armor from Drago and we did put one wound on Drago but he is minus one to wound so he's a little tough to kill right now. I'm just gonna say he's, he's, being, he's a little tough to kill right now however you don't have any CP you like burn through yeah. and then on this side he did make a charge with both the Everser and the, the Terminators even with, with a reroll he spent CP to reroll got them on the objective just to try and get some points because he knows he needs to get points so at the start of my turn I do hold this one because I have three models to his one model I hold that one, I hold that one, I hold that one, so I get 15 points as we move into... And he did get grind them down, but he didn't get engaged because he still has... I zoned him out, basically. He hasn't been able to deep strike in. Let's move on to turn number three for the Drukari. Plus one hit in action. I'm curious. I'm curious to see if I can kill Draco. I don't know. Stick around. Stick around. Let's see what we can do here. End of the turn. So what happened? He's not on his base because it kept on wobbling off. But the two Reapers, essentially, and this Venom kill all the Terminators. Dead. So I was able to get out with the Rax, and I take that objective away from him, even though the Assassin is still alive. The Helions came down and did Scramblers, because that's what they do. Uh, over here, I just basically kept the zoning out, so he has to use a CP, and then I charge everything in, and I kill Drago, and I kill the Paladins, because those Incubi just went nuts on Drago. I did spend the 2 CP to fall back and shoot with the heat lances, but they failed to hit the Apothecary. I really wanted to try and kill him. 
but that is stopping from taking this objective here, which means that going into turn three, uh, three, he also gets zero primary points, and that is a big deal. So let's see what he does. He still has the one terminator unit. He has the strike squad to come in from the captain, and he still has assassin back in the back. So what do you think will happen? Leave a comment down below and put a like for killing Drazar. Yeah, I mean, it's for like, killing, like. for killing Drazar. Put a like if you want to kill, if you want him to kill Drazar. Put a like for killing Draco. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> they're very similar. And then with his double attack, he just got to touch cover. So with that, we're moving on to turn number three. The Grey Knights are committed to the table. He decided to like lying in wait so he can teleport them within three inches. Because they're OPSEC, so he's taking that objective away from me right now. But right now, in order to get grind them down, he needs to kill four things. So he's hoping to kill the homunculus, the bikes, uh, either a venom or a unit of racks. These witches back here, maybe? No, no, not no, anymore. I think I can do that anymore. Not anymore, but he just got on to here. That incubi, and maybe that incubi. So he's trying to kill four things to, in order to get that, uh, that grind them down secondary. And then he's also getting this guy over here to get his two points for engaging all fronts as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a quick thing, he's actually going to put them here so that he's out of three, and then he gets the three points for engage. Oh, look at that. And he's also going to stop me from scoring that. Look at that. Look at that. That's a smart play right there. Although it's just a tie because you have two to my two. But it doesn't matter. He just needs to stop me from scoring it to mitigate the primary point bleeding. <laughs> So with that, let's dive into the Psychic phase. He's in the tide of Psychic Mortal Wounds right now. So there's a lot of Mortal Wounds that can happen out of a few units here. Okay, end of turn number three. Lots of stuff died. The Hemogulus died. Drazar died. Barely. Barely. I was hoping he'd survive to interrupt and then attack, but he died. Um, two more wounds on Baldus, even though he's sanctuary and has armor's resilience here. Uh, Succubus did two wounds. But look at that. Great stuff. And then the assassin took four damage from an overwatching Venom because Masters of Mutagen is awesome. But he killed the Venom without like blinking an eyelid. And then two of these uh, Rex died, but they're still alive. So I do get 10 points for holding these two objectives, because he did take that one away, took that one away, took that one So we're moving into turn number four for the Drukhari. It's getting pretty intense, and, and, and I, I'm running out of stuff, but my big damage dealers are still alive. So let's see how this goes as we move in to the final parts of the turn. Okay, that was the totality of turn uh, four. So I know I didn't like uh, do a, a after move recap, but essentially I ganged up uh, on the assassin with the birds, and the slith did do the two final wounds. Then he blew up and uh, did three wounds on one bird, two wounds on him, and didn't hit that. So that's good. I did kill these uh, with the venom. The kill through uh, four and shooting with the guys, and then I charged in and killed the last one, so that was really good there. And then both of the um, Reapers did nothing this turn. They killed one Terminator. That's it. They were doing so well, and then they did nothing. Although, Archon Skari and the Succubus have been passing all their saves against against <laughs> Valdis here. He has one wound left. <laughs> so, there's some um, interesting stuff happening on that side of the table. And over here, the Helions advanced to get up, shot everything, even with the Rax. Didn't do any damage with shooting, which was a shame. Tarzan did four wounds to the uh, brother captain, so he has one remaining. Um, but with that, he does hold that, and he holds that. So he finally gets 10 points. How many points? He gets 10 primary points. Put a like down there for the, uh, the Great Knights getting 10 primary points. With that, let's move into turn number four. Okay, okay. We're in here after, this is the Psyche phase for the Grey Knights. He's essentially just moved this guy around to get in this corner uh, to get his three for engage. He's moved his brother captain back here. So he decided to cast the first Psychic Power with Baldus. I'm risking it. I'm risking it. <laughs> he did roll a 10 plus 1, so it's an 11. I'm going to try to stop it, because if I do, he explodes. Because <laughs> he perils his... So I thought I'd film it, because it'd be hilarious if it happens. Okay. Don't do it. Okay, I need box scars over here. Ah, yeah! No, sad. I do have one CP that I could use to reroll it, but I'm not going to. So that's two mortal wounds on Archon. Card. Does he die? No, he does go down. But he did take quite a bit of the enemy with him with that. Yeah, good job, good job. The Succubus tried to save him with the Helm of Spite, or maybe she, she decided not to do it so that he would die. 
It is a dark city, after There's all. Some Yanari trees and That's there. true. Let us know what you think down below. Did she do it on purpose? <laughs> on to the, the end part of the turn here. And here we are at the end of round number four. So, the succubus and Arkoskari did die. Well, that was kind of going to happen. Uh, he did make a charge with the um, apothecary to make sure he was in engaged on all fronts over here. But I did put a wound on with the venom, and the wound is alive with one wound left. Yes. I do have one CP, which is good. Um, and then I'm going to get one, so I'll have two. And then he just murdered all of the racks. So I only get five, obje five points for primary by having this objective here. However, that maxes me out of 45 points. So with that, let's dive. He's going to try to get some late game banners here to make sure to like pop up some banners. So that's going to be good for him. So I'm just going to make sure that he can't place many banners to make sure that I, uh, I solidify that victory condition. And the, the Terminators are like super buffed up right now. Okay, let's move on to my turn. End of turn five for the Drukari. So I was able to get the Venom on here just to stop him from putting a banner down. Um, I got the Cavalites out just to take that objective. I shot the Cavalites and the Venom into here to two wounds. I did not overcharge because if not, the Venom could have died. And then both of the Reapers tried to find the Librarian who transhumans. Librarian, like a boss, didn't take any damage, but then took one wound from the Reaper charging, because I was hoping if he kills it, it explodes on a 5+, plus, not a 6-up. So it's like huge mortal wounds and could have killed all this. Which really good. <laughs> then over here, the Witches, because they have the plus 2 inches to movement drag, they're all a 6. So they have move 10 plus 6 with 16-inch move up. And then they were able to charge with the birds. And the birds did nothing, but the Witches did get the final wound on the perfect warrior. So we're taking him back to the gladiator arenas. So at the end here, he gets five points for primary, and it's all about how much can he kill for Titan. And the end of the the like movement and stuff. It's we're in the assault phase. There's lots of stuff happening right now. <laughs> so he did charge over here, move and charge, kill the cavalry warriors. He gated the apothecary here to get his engage on all fronts. However, he did charge in to kill the Reaper with Voldus. Uh, so on a five plus, the Reaper explodes. Look at his face. Look at his face. Hiya! No! <laughs> All that survives! There's a promotion at work! Oh my goodness, Drago went back to the warp. All that survives. So that is the end of the game. So that does give you your grind them down. And it gives you... So it's 15 for grind. That was very well done. Uh, it does give you your two for engage. You didn't raise any banners. I stopped you good. So that was uh, 15, 15... Uh, six. So that's definitely a Drukari victory. 45 primary, 15 for Abhor the Witch, uh, 14 for Engage on Fronts, and 10 for Scramblers. So I'm down 6 points out of 90, so 84. Yeah, good job. Thanks for the game. Thank you, Redmond. Okay, what did you think of the game? Uh, I honestly had a really good game. I think the big thing was, we talked earlier, was just the first turn was a big pivotal moment. Yep. Uh, just having that first turn board control, just the presence where you needed to be as things fail. You always have overlapping units, both things on objectives. It's, it's all about, you know, especially with MSU, it's about getting onto the objective, stopping you from scoring anything. Yeah. Then you, even if you killed a bunch, I had more where that came from. Exactly. And I just stopped you from scoring for like three to four turns, pretty much. And you just can't come back from that. Um, if you go first, you were able to kind of get on the objectives and force me to, you know, be a little bit more aggressive, and the game would have been a lot closer. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a lot. The big thing was just that big combat there and your incubi really proved to be their worth in this game. Really Killed did. Drazar and they just like just did work back there. Yeah, and uh, Drazar almost died. They killed Drago. Drazar almost died. So they both died. So. Yeah, it was an overall really good game. It was really fun. Uh, birdies are still alive. Thumbs up for the birdies. For the first time. For the first time ever. They still, they live through the whole game. Uh, thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to all the channel Patreons. If you like to support the content that I create, check the links down below. Click that like button if you enjoyed. And that's me Scary signing off until next time. Scary out. Ah, the dark kid.